All right, let's go over Dickens training so that way we can stay consistent at home. Whenever he's doing things that we want to keep seeing or he's listening to our commands, we want to make sure we reinforce that behavior with either praise, petting, or treats. Then whenever he's doing things that we don't want to see or he's not following our commands, we want to make sure we follow through with our training equipment. So let's go over Dickens training equipment. This is going to be his prong collar. He's going to wear this whenever he is on a leash. How we take this on and off, you're just going to secure one of the links and push through like so. To put it back together, you're just going to pinch and put through the holes of the other link. Whenever he has this on, the leash is going to attach to the D-ring that swivels. And how we use this, say he's in the heel command. Heel just means walk next to me on a nice loose leash. Say he's not where we want him. He's starting to pull ahead or he's going off to the side. We're just going to say no to verbally mark the incorrect behavior that we don't want to see. Give him a pop and then remind him heel. So no, pop, heel. And then, of course, when he gets back into the position that we want, we can give him that ver verbal praise, petting and treats to let him know he's doing a good job. Let's go over his remote. How we turn this on and off, there's a red dot on the collar and a red dot on the remote. We just touch these together. The green light flashing means it's on charged and ready to go. How we turn on the remote, on and off button on the back. We're just going to push and hold until the screen lights up. Level 30 is going to be on the screen. This is going to be Dickens level. Then we're going to focus on the black S button. S just stands for stimulation, so it's like an electric muscle stimulator. So say he's in that heel position and he's not really where we want him, he's starting to pull ahead. We're going to say no to verbally mark the incorrect behavior. Black S button, heel. No, button, heel. And then of course, whenever he gets back into that position, we can give him that verbal praise, petting and treats. So whenever we get him out first thing in the morning, we're going to put this on him. And the last thing at night is we're going to take this off. This way we always have that form of communication with Dickens throughout the day. Then we're going to have the prong collar on him whenever he's on the leash. So in the beginning, he'll probably have it on in the house, so we have a way to guide him around. And then we'll fade it out to where it's just going to be on walks. Depending on the level of distraction, you may have to use one of these. You may have to use both of these. It just depends on the situation that we are in with Dickens. So now let's go on to his commands. We've kind of already gone over the heel, but when we take him out on walks, you want to do about 80 to 90 percent of the walk in the heel position. The other 10 to 20 percent, you can give him the release word free. Free just means he's not in any set command and he can go explore and sniff on his own, kind of like we're going to follow him and he, instead of him following us. Let's move on to sit. Sit means stay as implied until he's given the release word free. This is really good for those door manners so he doesn't just think he can bolt through the door. So whenever we approach the door, we're going to have him sit. If he sits that great, if not, we're going to follow through with our training equipment. And then whenever we open the door, we either have the option to heal through the door with him or give him that release word free and have him go through the door alone. But as if he stays, perfect. If not, follow through the training equipment and then do it until he does it right. This way, he knows that the, the boundaries at home are the same that are here at the facility. Then we have down. Down means lay down until he's given that release word free. With the down, we're not going to free him from a distance. Because if we free him from a distance, we're rewarding him for coming to us and not staying in that down stay. So say we do a little bit of a distraction. We're going to go back to him and reward him and then free him from where he's at. And when we reward this behavior, we try to reward low to the ground. So this way he knows the positive zone is going to be low to the ground. Then we have place. Place is a boundary stay, ideally on an elevated bed. This is really good for whenever you're having guests come over or you're eating dinner. He has his own place to kind of experience what's going on. But he is in this said place that he can experience it and do his own thing. And he's not in the way of other people. So with this, ideally practice with a leash on in the house to begin with. So this way you have a way to guide him back if he decides to get off of the place bed. But say we do a little distraction. As long as all four feet stay on the bed, he is on place. So with place, we're going to go back to him and release him as well. So this way he doesn't get rewarded for coming to us. He gets rewarded for staying on the place bed. And when we reward this, we're going to reward on the place bed. So this way he knows that the positive zone is that boundary that he is on. And then we have come when called. With this, whenever we practice it, ideally he's going to be distracted when we need him to come back to us. So we're going to give him that release word free and have him get distracted and do his own thing because whenever we need him to come back to us, it's probably going to be whenever he is doing his own thing and not in a sit waiting for us to call him back to us. So we'll let him get distracted and then we're going to call him to us. As he's coming to us, we're going to praise him as he's coming to us, have him sit, and then give him the reward. Ideally, start out with a leash, especially if you are not in a fenced in area. So like a 30 to 50 foot leash would work. So this way, if he decides to ignore our, us calling him back to us, we have a safety measure so that we can reel him into us if we need to. And then we have leave it. 
Leave it means don't grab that. So start out with dog safe foods, drop something on the floor, say leave it if he does great. If not, follow through the training equipment. Ideally start out with a leash just to begin with so you have a way to guide him into different scenarios and situations if he decides to not respond to our command. So that is all of Dickens' commands. So we're going to reward the behavior that we want to keep seeing and then with the behavior that we don't want to see, we want to decrease that by following through with our training equipment. So have fun, stay consistent, and this is going to be Dickens doing his commands.
the training. Oh, you're fine. Down. Good. Good down. Good down. Good down. Good down. Good down. Down. Three. Keep going.
All right, let's go over the other features of the remote. Now that we already know how to turn it on, let's go over how to turn it off. It's going to be the same concept. You're just going to touch the red dots together. This turns off the collar. How we turn off the remote, on and off button on the back, we're just going to push and hold until the screen says off and goes blank. Then I'm going to turn it back on. And then we're going to go over the rest of the buttons on the remote. Start out with the red S button. You see the level on the screen is 30 right now. If I press the red S button, this is going to boost it to 50. So this is for whenever Dickens decides to do something dangerous or he's chasing a car, he's not responding to us and he's in that high adrenaline state of mind. 30 only reaches about here. And whenever he is doing something dangerous or he is in that high adrenaline state of mind, his, he can only, it only goes up to, All right, let's go over the other features of the remote. We already know how to turn it on, but let's go how to turn it off. You're gonna press those red dots together. That's going to turn off the collar. Then how we turn off the remote on and off button on the back, we're just going to push and hold until the screen says off and goes blank. Then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on and we're going to go over the rest of the buttons on the remote. So we've already kind of gone over the black S button. That is just going to be the, the level on the screen. That is his stimulation. Then let's go over the red S. If I press this, you saw level 30 change to 50. This is a boost feature. So if, if Dickens decides to do something dangerous that is going to cause him harm, like he's chasing a car down the street, whenever he's in that high adrenaline state of mind, he, he's up here and level 30 only reaches about here. So we jump it to 50 and this just meets him at the same level that he is at. So we have a way to communicate with him whenever he is in that high adrenaline state of mind. Then we have a T on the other side. T just stands for vibrate. We use this to make sure that the collar is on, but you can also use it whenever Dickens is further in his training. So three or four months from now, and he knows the boundaries are set and he's just pushing in a little bit. He just needs a little bit of a reminder, but not enough to use the stimulation. So we just hit that vibrate, just like knock it off. Then on the back of the remote, we have an M slash C button. This stands for momentary or continuous. At the beginning of the training, we introduce the remote at a very low level on continuous. And then whenever he gets further into training, we move on to momentary at a little bit of a higher level. And then on the back, we have that on and off button. It does have a flashlight. So if you click that on and off button, instead of holding it, it's going to be a flash. If you press it again, it's going to be a steady flashlight. And then you press it again, it turns it off. Then it, say this level on the screen, level 30, say he's just reacting to it too, if he's having a big reaction to it, or it's not enough, we can always change that. So we're just going to hold down on the dial until the 1D flashes, and then we can change it to whatever level we want. Right now, level 30 is working very well, so I'm just going to keep it at 30. I'm going to hold down on the dial, and this locks the number in. And it also makes it sure, so if you put this in your pocket, you can't change the number accidentally just by moving the dial. You have to press down on the dial to change it. Both the collar and the remote are rechargeable. Recharging port on the remote is right here and on the collar is right here. This should last for about two days if you keep it on for about 12 to 14 hour days. So you could charge it every other night. It has two charging ports. You can charge them at the same time. Dickens does have shorter fur, but if you notice that the prongs aren't making good contact, you can switch them over to the longer prongs. This is all in the box and it comes with a tool to remove the prongs and put different ones on. But he is short hair, so the short prongs should do him just fine. There is a manual at the bottom of the box to go over any of the other remote that things that you have questions about. This does have a two year warranty. So if you have any issues with it, you can contact the company and then we'll get back to you and hopefully get the issue resolved. And the collar is waterproof. So if it does get wet, not a big deal, but just dry off his neck and rotate the collar so it's not irritating one side of his neck more than the other. So he doesn't get like little rub marks whenever he is wet. So that is all of the other features of the remote. So have fun and stay consistent.